You see it, you hear it, and read about it. AI is everywhere. The boom of ChatGPT in 2022 made it real, urgent, and unavoidable. Suddenly, everyone was talking about it. But here's the question. Do they really know what they're talking about? Do you even know what AI really is? To understand how we got here and why today's breakthroughs are only part of an untold story, we must go back, back to the 1950s, when dreamers wired up machines to prove theorems faster than any human, when the word artificial intelligence was born, and the failures, the winters, and the false promises that still echo today. In the 1940s and early 1950s, ideas about thinking machines were mostly philosophical or theoretical. As Alan Turing published Computer Machinery and Intelligence, where he asks something wild. Can machines think? He even proposed the imitation game, later known as the Turing test. Then came real programs. In 1952, Arthur Samuel made a checkers program that could beat human state champions. Another landmark was the logic theorist, built in 1956 by Newell, Simon and Shaw. It proved theorems from Principia Mathematica better than the original human proofs. Yet, despite this, many didn't take AI seriously. Hardware was slow, tiny memory, and computers were rare and expensive. And so the gap between promise and reality was massive. But in summer 1956, a workshop at Dartmouth College changed everything. Scientists gathered to define AI as a field. They believed that every aspect of learning or intelligence could in principle be so precisely described that a machine could simulate it. And on that day, the term artificial intelligence was born. They planted the following seeds, symbolic AI, rule-based systems, and programs that could plan and execute. Most importantly, they got funding from none other than DARPA. For a moment, it felt the future was here, but there were blind spots. Those early systems couldn't handle messy, real-world problems, especially in natural language. They lacked common sense, they were brittle, and soon, expectations would begin to crack. But what if the answer wasn't in logic and symbols, but somewhere deeper? What if the key to building intelligent machines was not to copy our reasoning, but to copy our brains? Meanwhile, a parallel idea was growing, one that looked to biology for inspiration. As early as the 1940s, scientists were toying with a wild new concept, neural networks. Alongside symbolic AI, experiments with neural ideas emerged. The model in 1943 had already suggested that networks of simple neurons could in theory compute anything a Turing machine could. Later in 1958, the first Perspetron was born, a machine that could learn to classify inputs to recognize patterns. But Perspetrons had a wall. Single-layer Perspetrons couldn't solve certain tasks. Math showed there were things they just could not compute. Scientists thought that neural nets are dead ends, but the real problem was lack of layers, data, and computational power. Neither side had enough back then, and what that meant was early confidence from the 50s started to buckle under complexity. I confidently expect that within a matter of 10 or 15 years, something will emerge from the laboratories which is not too far from the robot of science fiction fame. The Thinking Machine But the story doesn't stop here. Next came hype cycles and winters. People thought AI was almost there, but early systems had no common sense. They couldn't cope with ambiguity and failed outside narrow tasks. The expectations outpaced what hardware, data, and design could deliver. As a result, governments and institutions started pulling funding. The Lighthill Report of 1973 in the UK told researchers, you promised big, but you haven't delivered. This drop in faith, investment, and visible success is known as the first AI winter. Many researchers shifted to other fields, but even in the ice, seeds were being planted, new architectures, new datasets, and slow but steady progress. In the 80s and 90s, AI revived. The symbolic rules-based approach wasn't enough. The new statistical and machine learning approach started to take off. This included more data, more neural nets, and backpropagation. As a result, expert systems had some success but also short brittleness. 
doing well in one domain but failing miserably in others. Then, hardware improved, data got cheaper, the internet exploded. The 2010s changed everything. Deep neural networks, layers upon layers, crushed benchmarks in vision, speech and games. As in 2012, ImageNet's victory shocked the field. Google's AI defeated champions in Go, a game once thought safe from machines. AI wasn't academic anymore, it was industrial. Billions poured in, cloud computing became the fuel, and GPUs became the engines. Then came the language models like GPT and BERT, architectures that changed everything. Suddenly, machines could generate text, translate dozens of languages, and write code and even spin stories. ChatGPT exploded into the public consciousness in 2022, followed by image generators like Midjourney and diffusion models that could create art from a sentence. For many, it felt like science fiction had arrived. Meanwhile, more challenges lingered. The cost of training ballooned, millions of dollars for a single model, energy demand skyrocketed, bias, safety control and ethics finally began to catch up. Some say we're on the brink of new winters if expectations again outstrip reality. But others say the momentum is different now. Not just hype, but infrastructure, global investment, demand and data are aligned. We started with dreamers in the 1950s. Wired up machines proving theorems, grand promises flying around, and the early neural models teased with possibility. Then came disillusionment. Winters, comebacks driven by new statistical and data-driven methods. And finally, the many layers of neural processing. Today, much seems possible. Many things are real that once were fantasy. What remains clear is that intelligence isn't one thing. It's messy, emergent, and context-driven. And though machines have come far, the journey is ongoing. The gap between what AI can do and what people expect still defines much of the story, and probably will be for decades to come. And so the question isn't if machines will think like us. The real question is, what happens when they don't? When they think in ways we can't even imagine.